Today we are going to do uh, one of the most important optimization uh, techniques, and this is which is called the linear programming. So let's see. Um, what kind of problems linear programming is uh, supposed to solve? So, let's take uh, one example. Um, so, my wife decided to put me on a serious diet, right? <laughs> but, she is also concerned with my failing health, so she wants to make sure uh, that I get all the vitamins necessary, right? But she is also very uh, frugal, if not stingy, right? And she wants to spend as little money feeding me as possible. So how does she solve this problem? Well, she uses linear programming. Uh, and this is the idea. So uh, assume that we have a, a daily uh, vitamin intake uh, requirements. Uh, which is, so we have how many, let's for simplicity assume we have seven vitamins all together. So vitamin one, uh, we need the B1 milligrams uh, per day. Uh, then vitamin B2, uh, we need B2 milligrams per day, and finally, V7, uh, we need V7 uh, milligrams per day, okay? So that's one piece of information that she has. The other piece of information are the prices of vegetables, right? So uh, you have, uh, uh, say, uh, um, certain number, say, uh, um, 20 food samples. Uh, so you have, uh, uh, say, F1, uh, that's broccoli. Uh, and uh, the price is uh, $5 per kilogram, okay? And you know um, for each of the vitamins, uh, you know that uh, uh, vitamin content Uh, I'll say height, <laughs> vitamin content is, uh, uh, say, A1I milligrams uh, per, uh, per, uh, say, uh, gram. And then you know you have another very excited uh, uh, food, say Bruce Brussels sprouts, uh, that has uh, uh, vitamin content A2I milligrams per gram of uh, food, all the way down to F1. Uh, 
20, uh, and uh, the vitamin content in 20 is uh, a uh, um, uh, 20 uh, I, right, uh, milligrams per gram, right? So she is given this information and uh, of course on this list of foods I can guarantee you there is no bacon, okay, and no sausage. So only broccoli and other similar green, very <laughs> exciting stuff, all right? So uh, what she now wants to do, she wants to design a menu for me, okay? And she's going to buy uh, X1 amount of food sample F1, X2, amount of uh, food sample F2 and so forth, X20 amount of uh, F20 and what is her, her goal? Let's move up uh, to the other board. Um, her goal is that I get all, first of all, that I, she wants to minimize the cost. So what is the cost? So she wants to minimize the cost, uh, i.e. Uh, minimize um, x1, uh, ah, so we didn't put here, uh, we need variables for vitamin content and uh, uh, prices as well. So this will be, uh, let's say, uh, this is price uh, P1. Here we will have uh, price P2 and here price P20, right? So AI, uh, AJI uh, tells you how many milligrams of vitamin I you have in uh, food uh, J. So maybe we can make this uh, explicit. So uh, let us write it, I guess, here. So in general, uh, PI is a price of uh, FI, uh, right, um, per, say, kilogram, uh, and uh, A, uh, say, J, I is uh, uh, um, content of uh, vitamin uh, I in food uh, J, food item J, um, right, say, in milligrams uh, per gram or whichever. Um, measurement unit we use. So now she wants to minimize the total cost. Uh, what will be the total cost? Well, uh, if these are the amounts, uh, unknown amounts of how much of each food sample she has to buy, then this will be minimizing as, uh, if x1 times p1 plus x2 times p2 plus x20 times p20. So that's the objective, right? Because uh, if p1 is price per kilo of food number one, 
and this is the amount that she is going to buy. This will be total cost for this food staple and so forth. And she wants to minimize this cost, right? But uh, she also um, she also wants to make sure that I get uh, all of the necessary vitamins in the right amount. So let's see for vitamin V uh, one, how much uh, will I get? Well, it will be. Uh, the content of in the food staple one of uh, vitamin number one times the amount that uh, she buys it, right? Uh, plus um, item food item two and vitamin one times x2 plus all the way a 20 uh, 1 comma 1 uh, times x20 and she wants to make sure that this is bigger or equal the prescribed uh, daily dosage of uh, for, uh, for vitamin B1, which will be B1, right? And similarly for vitamin 2, the content will be A21 times, <coughs> no, sorry, X, uh, that would be X, um, uh, X12 uh, times X1 plus A, uh, um, that will be 2, 2, x2 plus and so forth, a22 times x20 should be bigger or equal than b2. Right? And so forth for all of the vitamins. Uh, v7 uh, at the end is a17 times x1 plus A27 uh, times X2 plus and so forth, A27 X20 should be bigger or equal than B7. Right? So this is the total price of the groceries, right? If X1, X2, and X20 are the amounts um, uh, that uh, she has to buy of each food staple. P are the prices uh, of each food staple. This is then the content of uh, vitamin number one in all of the food staples, right? Um, multiplied by the quantities, the corresponding quantities. Uh, and this is a typical example of a linear, uh, it is called linear program, but it's actually just a linear minimization or maximization, depending on the problem. In this case, we are looking to maximize. So this will be a linear objective and all, uh, all of the constraints are linear and uh, another uh, important uh, feature here, you can buy only non-negative amounts of food, right? Uh, so all the variables x1, x2, up to x20 have to be bigger or equal than zero. Right? And uh, even though the, both the objective and the constraints are uh, linear, the problem is actually highly non-trivial. And in fact, uh, a Russian mathematician, Kantorovich, shared the Nobel Prize in economics uh, for uh, 
uh, working out uh, um, linear programming uh, algorithms for solving linear uh, programs. Um, and it's easy to uh, kind of see that uh, this kind of setup generalizes to a gazillion of uh, uh, problems. Another problem would be, say you are running uh, for a seat in the House of Representatives and you have 20 outlets for advertising yourself, right? Uh, P1 would be price of advertising uh, by putting ad uh, through Google. P2 would be price of advertising through Facebook. And probably P20 would be price of advertising in Sydney Morning Herald, right? If they get any income from advertisements these days. So, right? And uh, these uh, uh, numbers A's can tell you how many votes per invested dollar or, uh, on Google you get, right? And so you want to minimize the cost, but on all issues, you have to um, achieve a certain threshold of uh, uh, number of voters that you will get, say, in rural areas, in suburbia, and so forth. So there are really gazillions of uh, linear programming problems that uh, occur very naturally uh, in uh, logistics, uh, uh, in economics, and in engineering. We will see that one can use this technique uh, to design digital filters, for example, like we ripple digital filters. So uh, this is really a truly important um, uh, technique, right? And uh, um, the, the most common algorithm to solve it, it's called the simplex algorithm. But unfortunately, even though in practice it tends to be very fast, it is not guaranteed to run, to run in polynomial time. Uh, and uh, then in uh, 60s, uh, a Russian mathematician uh, managed to find an algorithm that uh, is guaranteed uh, to run in polynomial time, but in pretty bad polynomial time, I think it was uh, of order n to the fourth, I'm not exactly sure, but pretty bad. But what happened? Uh, Mathematicians in America got the idea that that's very convenient fact, so they went through to funding agencies and the American military establishment and told everyone that Russians have gotten a fast algorithm for solving linear problems and they're going to beat us in everything, right? And lo and behold, um, uh, they got the heaps of money to develop, uh, to study and develop algorithms for linear problems, but it wasn't until 1985, until, uh, you see the, the Russian mathematician, I forget his name, uh, it was guaranteed to run in polynomial time, but pretty slow, pretty bad polynomial time, I think. Uh, n to the power 4 or something like that. And in fact, simplex was beating the polynomial time algorithm in practice. Uh, and then only in 85, uh, an Indian mathematician that was at that time at Berkeley um, solved uh, this uh, problem. Uh, his name is Karmarker uh, by a polynomial time algorithm uh, which was, in fact, uh, often faster than simplex uh, uh, method. And uh, 
he was an, an employee of IBM, and they uh, kept it actually secret uh, for quite a while and tried to patent their uh, software for solving uh, linear programs. Um, but eventually, of course, the method became public, and it's called interior point uh, uh, method, and it was generalized with similar ideas to Karmarker's idea for linear programming were used in convex optimization uh, in general. So I just I'm telling you this history just to point out how hugely significant uh, the, uh, the algorithm, <coughs> I mean the problem is, okay? So in general, let's see in general what, uh, uh, what definition, the definition of a linear program is, and let me follow the notes to keep the notation consistent. So these notes are on the course uh, website. Uh, so uh, the standard form, you see, this type of problems, you don't hold their solution by hand because you have uh, libraries of highly optimized uh, algorithms for solving these, uh, uh, these problems, but of course uh, then the input data has to be in particular form that the program accepts. And this is usually uh, called the standard form. of uh, linear programs which are the, the abbreviated just by LB. Now notice here the uh, variables can take any real value, value or any real value. You can buy fractional, you can buy 2.75 kilos of broccoli, right? And you can eat it all, right? And, uh, um, but, uh, um, as we will see later, if you require that the uh, axes, uh, that the uh, quantities are integers, uh, then uh, this, program, this problem becomes intractable. There is no polynomial time algorithm to solve it, and you have to rely on uh, some heuristics. And uh, uh, integer form of this uh, uh, also naturally pops up in many fields. For example, our students, PhD students in computer engineering uh, often uh, end up with a linear program in which variables have to take integer values because they are, for example, the number of certain types of processors in a certain pipeline in a system and similarly. So we will see about this uh, later, so what is the standard form? Uh, the objective is always of the form f of x equals x is a vector, of course, equals sum of j is equal from 1 So n uh, cj xj, <coughs> right? And uh, constraints are always of the form sum of uh, j is equal from 1 to n a i j uh, times xj uh, is smaller or equal than pi uh, for i going between 1 and, say, certain number n of inequalities. 
with additional uh, constraint that all xj's have to be uh, bigger or equal uh, to zero. This is called the standard uh, form, right? Now, uh, for technical simplicity, we will introduce the following partial ordering of the um, n-dimensional uh, vectors as vector x is smaller or equal than a vector y if and only if uh, for all i such that uh, i is bigger or equal than 1 and smaller or equal than n, uh, xj is smaller or equal than yj. So obviously this is uh, then a only partial ordering because, uh, of course, vectors can be incompatible because maybe x1 is smaller or equal than y1, but x2 is larger than y2, right? So inequality uh, in either direction cannot form, I cannot call. Uh, so why do we introduce this notation? Because now this can be written in a very simple form. Uh, we will define vector c to be vector uh, c1, c2, up to, uh, up to cn, right? And we will defi define matrix A uh, of uh, a i j so that uh, i goes between 1 and m and j goes between 1 and n if you have uh, m of this inequality so this is a vector this is a matrix and now uh, the standard form is very simple right because uh, f of x can be simply written as a C transpose to make it into a row from column, right? Times x, right? Where x is a vector, uh, so x is equal to x1 up to xn, and the constraints are, and also these uh, we can also put in a uh, vector. Let me do it here. So vector B is equal B1 all the way up to Bm. Right? And now the constraints are simply A times x smaller or equal than vector B. Right? Uh, and plus that uh, vector x is bigger or equal than zero vector, right? Uh, what is a zero vector? Well, that's just a vector of all zeros. Huh? Okay, so this is a really very compact way of writing linear program, and that's exactly what your linear solvers will ask you. You will input uh, two vectors and a matrix. Uh, so say uh, in uh, MATLAB would be something like lin prog uh, of uh, uh, C A B, if I remember the order of variables exactly, and uh, lo and behold, uh, as the output, you will get the values of x that maximize this objective. 
subject to this constraint. So, and you don't have to worry. Uh, and you can choose uh, options here, what algorithm uh, the program should use. Uh, and the choices are simplex or modified simplex, something called modified simplex, and uh, also uh, interior coins, Karmarkers method. OK. So we will do, um, besides this diet problem, right, with vitamins, uh, uh, later on, we might do, uh, depending on what we are going to decide to do uh, in the rest of the course, we might show how linear programs can be used uh, to uh, design uh, uh, minimal ripple digital filters. Yes? Um, so is the cost C or the constraint? Okay, so. Uh, C is uh, uh, the <coughs> multipliers for the vector. So in, uh, say, in this case, uh, right, uh, the total cost is the amount uh, times uh, the price. So P would be, so let's uh, uh, then uh, so in our case, case uh, C would be actually uh, P1 <coughs> up to P20, uh, i.e. price of each food sample, sample So you want to uh, okay. So now I am doing two things at the same time, right? So uh, so this is uh, because this problem is actually a dual problem. So let me uh, let me uh, before we show the example, let me define another uh, version of linear program. So that's type 1 that is, uh, uh, in this case, uh, is maximized. Uh, so uh, it would be the objective is uh, uh, maximize uh, uh, this uh, F, right, subject to the upper bounds uh, for uh, this uh, product of matrix and variable. This one was opposite, uh, so uh, the other type would be, again, you say, you have C that is C1 up to Cn, uh, but now your objective is to minimize uh, f of x, which is C transpose times x, right? Subject to constraints. that uh, a x is uh, bigger or equal than b, right? Uh, so there are two types, depending on the nature of the problem, there are two types of linear programming. One is to maximize certain objective, for example, uh, to maximize, okay, so what can this be? Uh, uh, for example, uh, this can be maximized the uh, expected return of your stock portfolio, right? Where C1 is number of stocks of company 1 up to number of stocks of company uh, N, and you want to maximize uh, your expected 
uh, return, sorry, C1 is the expected, uh, what would be expected return of stock C1 of first stock, expected return of the uh, last uh, end stock, and this uh, and X are the quantities of each stock that you have, and you want to maximize expected return subject to the constraint uh, that, uh, um, uh, that uh, okay, I'm now talking here, maximizing subject to the constraint uh, that uh, uh, the, say, a risk for each of the of your portfolio in several categories is always smaller than certain bound. So sometimes, so you usually minimize some cost and uh, uh, or you maximize certain benefit, uh, right? Both uh, are legitimate linear uh, programs. Okay, so, um, in our case, to answer your question, this problem is of the second type because, so in our example, uh, C is essentially the vector of P's, P1 up to P20, which are prices of food samples. Right? Uh, and uh, A I J's is the content of vitamin uh, J in food staple I and uh, B J is uh, uh, the daily daily uh, requirement uh, for vitamin uh, B, uh, J, right? So you want to minimize 